got to be respectful of that journey and that trip in regards to it. Um, but now that I'm in a different place, I think I might take that trip up there to her for our next interview instead. So that way, all you got to do is just be ready. Because, you know, I've recently have upgraded that I can do that now. Okay, upgrade. Uh, I got to give the people what they want. Get it, get it I got to make it want. possible. That's why, you know, with your event. I'm good for that. I'm good for giving the people what they want. You are. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? Every single time I see you on social media, I see new faces. And there be people I know, too, Yeah. That that are getting the thank you. Yeah. from you yeah. see for those who don't know uh if you ever have a a, a burger from this woman talk about it you immediately <laughs> first of all thank you for tuning into another edition of where i come from it is i mr tone death i am back in the building on a saturday um this beautiful beautiful saturday probably the last day of summer right. <laughs> for a long time here in wisconsin and I am joined by somebody who's been here before. Uh, see, I got new toys and my toys don't want to act right. Okay. Someone who's been here before. Uh, she is not new to this, but she is definitely true to this. Um, <laughs> Thank you. She has actually been like part of the reason why my transition to uh, veganism has been possible. Wow. Uh, because when I sit here and I look at the things that you you do, and even when you make your little your behind the scenes videos, of like yeah. where you go get your food from and how you prep things every once in a while, or even the fact that like, okay, you can go to this store and you buy this and I get mm -hmm. that, or well, I'm going to try something new today, but I'm going to use this instead. Uh, on top of, of course, the normal people who you know vegan restaurants and stuff like that, uh, I do have to say like the reason why I am able to transition away from certain foods was because i know that there's not only just an alternative to it mm -hmm. but it tastes good Absolutely. like that's the key part i don't think people really understand changing to a meatless diet is very difficult because you know one we've been eating meat majority of our lives yes uh two meat tastes good if you cook it right here let's keep it a buck um that's probably like the hardest reason why people can't quit meat because it tastes good. Yeah. But when you're able to find alternatives to it and it's fun, it's exciting, it tastes good. It's not one of those sad alternatives or because I've started to find out lately, too, that sometimes alternatives can make your body even worse than Absolutely. what you're replacing. Absolutely. Um, so the fact that you do your food uh, and you actually it has not killed me yet. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. But I am joined by Butterfly, uh, the one and only. Uh, damn, if I next time you hear, I got something queued up for you. I'm gonna use that. I got an idea. Okay. Uh, stow back. Uh, but today we are here to one give this woman her flowers because butterflies have to land somewhere. Uh, and if you pay attention to at the name of this episode, it's called the Evolution of a Butterfly. Mm. Um, I like that. The reason why I have to name this, because like I said, for those of you guys, if you've been rocking with me long enough, you know that there is a previous episode that we did where she was really just getting out there uh, and starting her butter burgers. Yep. That is that right? Butter burgers? Yep. Okay. I thought it was something more butterfly-ish, but I butter know, burgers. Right? You know, I was butter like, wait a minute. Burgers. This is just butter burgers. Um, and... The thing about it is, is, and this is why I want to give her her flowers before we talk about what she got going on. I have legitimately seen this woman posted up all summer at parks, at venues, at markets, mm -hmm. at basketball games, wow. at uh, festivals. Okay. Hell, you might even find her out in your parking lot on a random day. Listen. Okay. Trap star. Right. <laughs> Fam, I have never seen nobody hustle so hard. To get people off of meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Dang, that is what I'm doing. Yeah. You hustling hard to get people off of meat at the end of the day. Yeah. One burger at a time. One burger at a time. I mean, she does other things in burger, but honestly, fam, you gotta try the burgers. Okay. I came in here one day at Sherman Phoenix. And I, I don't come in on the weekdays too often because you know, life. I came in one day and I see her posted up over there to look who who's cooking. Shout out to Ashley. And a D Ashley. over there. Um, and I had $15 in my pocket. Guess who got my $15? Okay. 
I just want you to know that. That was not the plan that day. Gratitude. Gratitude okay. for that. I passed up a foe for foe. I just want y'all to know that. Okay? I passed up a foe for foe for this woman. My burgers are made with love and affection. And that is why I eat them. Because I stay hungry. And anybody who knows me know I love love. But that's a whole other conversation. But, okay, so since the last time you've been here, what is new with you? What is new? When did I come? What What was that? Maybe a year ago? It was about, definitely a year ago. Um, about a year ago. I can actually go find the exact time frame. It is a lot. I came on here before my, uh, my last... <laughs> Before the first event, before okay. the one night stand, because okay. that's why you were here, because okay. of the one night stand. We're gonna get into that. Um, I I have grown uh, tremendously. I have served. Oh, I don't even. I wish I would have got a burger counter, but you should. Oh, you should. You should get one of them little clicker things. Yeah. So for every time you do a burger, first I gotta do the video, then yeah. you have to click it, because they cash app you most of the time, don't they? Yeah. Go back to your cash app for the year. And see, just see. You never know. It's cash a rough estimate. App, cash. Um, it's, a rough, it's a rough estimate. Yeah, I should though. But um, I've served so many burgers. I've at least served over a thousand burgers, and I think that is pretty dope because they're not. They don't contain any meat. You know what I'm saying? They don't contain meat. They don't contain dairy, eggs, anything like exactly that. Exactly. year ago. Sir. Oh, Rick. No, mm -hmm. it was October. It was October last year. Um, so yeah, I've served well over a thousand burgers. Um, I had a, uh, I had my one night stand event. I also was able to do a, what was that event called? Trap brunch. Yes, um, I remember that. That was pretty nice. I did a forbidden fruit art gallery. I collaborated. We gonna talk about on that too, because that was fire. Yeah, I couldn't make it that day because I had <laughs> recordings, but I seen it, and baby, everything was art, including this right here. Hey. Everything was art. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I did that. I popped up at Sherman Phoenix. Um, where else have I been? I did Juneteenth. That was on my radar. I, I wanted remember. to do that. Um, How's that experience? Oh, it was. It was really dope because that was the blackest of black days. Yeah. Because we had just fresh fresh out of a pandemic. So this was the first time everybody was truly outside. Yeah. It's a holiday, it's a federal holiday now. Yeah. Okay. So and you were down there with nothing but us. Yeah. Well, oh, they always show up. Oh, uh, for sure. They those there's a group up. of those that are always show up, but it was our day. One hundred percent. That was that that's crazy because I'm now like thinking about it. Yeah. So I'm um, the emotions are coming back and that, that was really huge for me, especially to even put that on one of my goals list. Um, the prior year, I'm like, I have to do Juneteenth. So I had did Juneteenth at uh, Alice uh, Garden. Okay. So I did it there the first year. And then I said, I wanted to do it at, um, you know, the actual third street. Yeah. Event. yeah. And so for me to be down there and, uh, for people to just tell me like they were looking for me and I'm so happy I found you and just tasting my burgers, congratulating me. And um, it was it was just a really dope experience. It was a lot of lessons I learned that day. What What's the biggest lesson you took away from that? Oh, um, as a person and as a business person. I need a team. Mm. I need a team. That is that is my biggest lesson. And it's, it's, I, I'm not saying that I don't have a team. I need to use my voice. That's crazy that I'm saying that because I just recently lost my voice. And the message that I received was um, either use your voice or lose it in transition. Big on this facts. Journey. Okay. Um, so if I just use my voice more and ask, like ask for help and give people enough notice to let them know that I need help and right. this is what I'm trying to do and this is where it can and tell them where it can go and all of that stuff people don't mind helping me at all I think as African Americans specifically African Americans uh -huh. we find it difficult to ask for help yeah. because we always have the fear we owe somebody something yes okay and I don't think people understand like we really just want to help those who help themselves mm -hmm. so 
there's the fear on one side of helping somebody and they turn into a user. And then there's the fear on the other side of asking for help. And then they expect something in return. Yeah. So we kind of got that dichotomy that we just got to let go. Cause I'm not going to lie to you. I've been doing this collectively in one shape or form for about 12 years. Okay. Do you know, I did not build a team until about two years ago. Really? Yes. I did not want to let nobody else to have any control over this because I felt that one people would take my ideas and then try to go off and do something. And then they reap the benefits from it, which I had to learn. You can't think like that. Right. And then two, everybody always wants something Yeah. like, oh, if I do this, how much will I get paid? Or if I do this, how much credit would I get? Or, oh, this is all you have to do. Well, I'm going to do this as well, too. Mm -hmm. And then they'll find a loophole that I won't get what I'm supposed to get. So I had that big fear. And after a while, I realized, look, you can copy this all you want. Yeah. One, you can't do it like I do it. You'll never be. Me. OK, two, there's things I do that you don't know I do. Mm -hmm. So when you get ready to try to do it and everybody see you fail at it, they're going to know that you were not doing it authentically. Mm -hmm. You see? So once you learn how to, and then you have a group of people that are so fucking awesome, you probably don't even have to say nothing. No. Exactly. And that's what I just said, though. Like, I, I have a ton of people that will help me. I just have to be considerate with people's time. And right. I have to be considerate and giving them a heads up. So I learned to that I need a team. I do need a team. Okay. Um, and uh, like signage and stuff like that. So you know, I'm 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 a growing business. I don't want to say small. I am a growing business. Thank you. There's no such thing as small businesses anymore. Right. And so um, it's you know it's it's me, my grill, and my babies. That's how we've been glazing the city. So um, I had my table. Uh, but I didn't have like signage to pull people to me to know that that's what's at this table. Yeah. Okay. And um, so I, I would say that was like one of the biggest takeaways. I need a team and I need more signage um, or at least somebody. Well, that's a part of my team being in the middle of the street, telling people to go over there, you know, because Juneteenth, that is, I don't know if it was like 400 vendors. That yeah, sounds about right. So it's like. Everybody trying to get your it's, money. It's 400 vendors. Everybody trying to get your money. You're going to have at least 5% mm, of those vendors probably selling the same thing you sell it. Yeah. And it's not that they're competition on purpose. It's just everybody kind of sometimes we tend to have the same kind of mission. Yeah. And we have to take in consideration, just like I said, you may want to hustle people to eat healthier, yeah. but that's not you're not the only person with that concept. So sometimes you got to make yourself stand out a little bit. Exactly. Great thing about it is, is you cool with the Sherman Phoenix. So there's people here that, right, that you can talk to. There's a whole little room really? off to the left from where you was posted yeah. at. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just saying, yeah. Go ahead and talk to her. <laughs> She'll go ahead and get the signage together for you. Exactly. But you just said something that um, <clears throat> I tend to forget about you. Is you are an entrepreneur mom yeah okay yeah. mom that's the i think a lot of people we tend to leave that last part off but you're an entrepreneur mom heavy on the mom on the mom heavy okay? on the mom <laughs> heavy on the mom and every time i look up i tend to i'll see them with you no matter what yeah okay it's to the point where if i see them because they're all one of them will be running around doing something yeah. i know you somewhere nearby I just yeah. gotta find out where you posted at yeah. how is how's this last year been with that Oh my goodness it has been um tough i don't want to lie about it it has been very tough um because i have that that feeling of guilt very very often okay because my babies are small they're um six and eight so they don't want to be at these pop-ups with me right. selling burgers every single not every day, but like we Damn. was at it five times a there week. There was a point in time where there was a different day. We just have to find a map of where you was at Literally, that day. Literally, y'all just had to find out where I was at, and they was with me. So they were tired of it. I, I know like when I would, would be getting dressed and putting on certain stuff, they'd be like, you got to pop up today? And I'd be like, yo. <laughs> and they'll ask like if they can go with somebody. But um, that it was really tough because it's like, dang. I don't want my kid. I had posted this in my story. Like, 
Um, sometimes I would just take off to go to the park with my kids. Right. Um, and I had said, like, let me spend time with my kids because they are not about to be sitting on the couch talking about we didn't have no childhood. <laughs> we had to trap every single day. I mean, they might be hustlers, but I feel you on that. They do. Um, one of the things that I did learn to do is to um, to get them more involved. Right. So my daughter does tea. She does really, really well with her tea. Um, she's better than me with um, her marketing skills. She's just a, a really great saleswoman. Right. And um the mayor has her has had her lemonade already. I remember that. Um she sells out every single time. And then like my son, he not so much, but he will sell water. And when he does sell water, he does really good. But um I did learn to keep them involved so it's not like so boring for right. them or they're just waiting. Because sometimes they do want to they they want to help, but they do. One thing you did say, and I think a lot of us as parents, period, not just only entrepreneurs, but parents, period, is we have to realize we're out here working for them, yeah. but sometimes they just want us. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I have that, I had that issue with my uh, my youngest more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, we would occasionally, I, I'm always, I used to always be here at the studio. Like I would get off my regular nine to five and then boom, I'm shooting straight to the studio. My youngest got to the point where it was like, what time are you coming home? Yeah. When are you coming home? But he would go and open up their uh, their family app in the phone just to see where my car was. Mm-hmm. And they would watch to see if I'm on my way home because they really was wondering. So I had to get to the point where I had to stop being in the studio. Yeah, I had to literally give more responsibility to my other producer than I wanted to. And it's not that I couldn't trust them with it because yeah. if you've ever met Tommy, Tommy's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it was like forcing me to let go of all that responsibility just to be home with them. Now, me and my youngest, we'll sit up till 10 o'clock at night sometimes and just have heart to heart conversations. I don't know what the hell she'd be talking about. Okay. (laughs) It'd be things on YouTube that I don't even know. But she'll sit here and tell me everything. She was snitched on her sister several times oh yeah like i'd have found out she even had a boyfriend and everything wow yeah <laughs> okay i was like you only nine years old why do you have a boyfriend and then she'll come and tell me about her boyfriend it's like i didn't like him anyway he cheated it's like how is he nine years old cheating how do you know about cheating Ooh. like then that was a hold on the conversation i had to have That's so i'm like head. damn the dating pool is got pissing at that age what the yes. hell yeah, I need y'all to, I need, and you go to a Hispanic school, so that's even so it's universal. Doesn't matter what language they speak, yeah. y'all are trash. But, <laughs> but, and I realized I had to do that. So now, me and my girls, and I have girls. So as a dad with girls, you know, it's very important to be around them. Um, we got this rapport, but they want to do this too. Yeah. Okay. So occasionally, I let them come to the studio with me. Uh, Friday, we were here for an hour. Um, I had to do some editing, and they were here just on the mic. Had a whole conversation about, to this day, I don't know what. I should have recorded it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they you got to let them be a part of it. Yeah. That's it, why it, your it daughter, I'll sell you. Yeah. It, <laughs> it has to be a healthy balance for sure. Right. <sighs> One not the night. Deep side. <laughs> so, no, not the side transition. I'm sorry. It's not you. Oh, no, no. This deep side with the glasses off on a different show has a completely different meaning. Okay. okay? This is just me getting serious. Okay. So, when we first met here in this studio, mm-hmm. you were doing a one-night stand. A one-night stand. Okay. Now, for those of you freaks out there, it's not what you think. And it kind of is. <laughs> Shut up. That's supposed to be the surprise. Damn, you talk too much. What was putting that event together because when me and you talked we were promoting about it but we didn't get a chance to talk about the actual event itself and the outcome of the event oh um, yeah i'm making you go back a year yes um that event was beautiful okay it was absolutely beautiful um so what a one night stand is so we just talked about it i i do a lot of hustling, a lot of hustle and bustle. I pop up from place to place to place to place. You can find me on the, the north club, side, west butt. side, oh. south side, downtown. You can find me plenty places. And um, <laughs> you can find me a lot of different places. 
and who I am, am a I am a very intimate person. So right. I want to provide a more intimate experience. And I want people to really get to experience me more. And I know they're not able to do that every single day or right. every time I sell food. So I wanted to create a very sacred space right. where you get to enjoy me, my vegan food, my vibe, and other people who have the same vibe as us. Right. Not not necessarily vegans. But it is geared towards the vegans because we don't have that here in Milwaukee. Right. But I also uh, wanted to turn the meat eaters on. So I knew I had to do something that was very catchy. Um, so it was I named it a one night stand because that's kind of what it is. You get right. me for one night and one night only. And um, you get to enjoy all of me. OK, so <laughs> for those who didn't get a chance to go to the one night stand before, because you didn't know about it because you're in your shell. You're in luck. Luck. Because it's a new year. It is a new year. And she's letting you enjoy her for one more time. One more time. November 14th. November 14th, a one night stand menage a trois. Now, explain this one. <laughs> so November 15th is my birthday, and I am turning 33. Okay which is my master year. Um, so I'm super excited about that um, upcoming journey. But I I wanted to continue the one night stand aspect of it. Right. It's the same thing. Um, but I wanted to add the menage a trois because I'm turning 33. So right. it's just a play on word. And then it'll be me, you, and then my vegan food. Okay. I'm selfish. So if I'm there, this is all. Food and hers all belongs to me. Uh -huh. Y'all just gonna have to wait your turn. <laughs> I am to be experienced. You are an possessed. experience. I you am. are an experience. And this is not, not on no no weird shit, but y'all actually really have to sit down with her. She is a whole vibe, uh, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Like, just be her friend on social media. It the rest is you'll figure the rest out in regards to that. How can we be a part of this menage a trois? So you can um, purchase a ticket on my cash drop. Dang, I have to cash drop. Yeah. Wow, that's it's too much stuff out here. Um, so it's on my cash drop. I, yeah, that's that's uh, the form of payment that I use. Smart. It's on my cash drop. However, um, I do take Cash App, Apple Pay, Venmo, Zelle, all of that to purchase your tickets. Tickets are $60 okay. and you'll get a drink, my vegan food. I'll do vegan hors d'oeuvres. My butter burgers will be there, of course. Um, I'll do my hot, hot uh, with my buffalo bites and my honey barbecue bites. Um, crab cakes. Um, we'll have vegan dessert. How do you have? Never mind. I, I just got to experience it. Never mind. Yes. I'm like, how are you making cra vegan crab cake? That's just, it's not right. And so the time is um, six to nine. Only three hours. See, I see what you did there. Six to nine. So we're what? living in the world of three here. Okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. And then sixty nine. I I said I see it, sweetheart. <laughs> Stop it. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, it's going to be at Makoko's restaurant, which is absolutely gorgeous. Did I've been see? here. I haven't been into Makoko's yet, but I hear so many people talk about it. Oh my goodness. It is so gorgeous. In and there. it's not that far from my house from what I keep hearing. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So the address is 7420 South Greenfield. Mm -hmm. um, That's like maybe five blocks from my house. Oh, Max. wow. Look, I have my babies at night. You better pull up. I'm gonna pull up six to nine. I'm gonna pull up. That's um, my last week of freedom. Anyway, I'm gonna pull up. Okay. Yeah, it's for my thirty third birthday. I do want to celebrate with y'all. Um, yeah, I want to celebrate with like all of my supporters. And the reason why you gonna ask me why why I'm doing this? Why I'm doing this? Because <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna I was gonna let you tell it. It's your story. So the reason why I am doing this is because I want to create a space for vegans that is sexy, for one, that is still close to what we're used to doing. Right. Um, and we just don't have the access to do it because 
restaurants don't provide vegan food. Um, and then the restaurants that do provide vegan food is not a part of our culture. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just like something that they're doing as an alternative to keep your business. That or I'm talking about actual vegan restaurants. We have vegan restaurants here, but there is not like geared towards black people in nah, our palate nah, in nah. our taste buds. Nah, we need some some real we still like seasoning. You we, know, as a vegan, like, I still we love, love it's a requirement. Exactly. Because seasoning actually is what really most people are eating food for. Exactly. Because you're not eating no plain, no bland chicken. You're not. Not on purpose. <laughs> you not. If my babies cook and they didn't flavor, uh, I'm gonna eat it because it's my babies. But no, I'm not gonna go in the kitchen and no. throw a whole chicken breast on there and don't season it whatsoever. Exactly. I completely understand. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think people tend to forget that we honestly really eat for flavor. Yeah. So if you realize that what the flavor that you look for when you get a burger or when you're getting a steak or when you're getting a chicken can be emulated without having all of that, um meat products added into it right for most people it's not a, it's not a hard shift right and i think that's the biggest reason why so many people won't go vegan because there's no guaranteed spots that make us feel like if i go in here and i want a turkey leg whether it's vegan or not it's still going to taste like what i think a turkey leg should taste like mm -hmm. which is why i fuck with you yeah so that's what i wanted to to do i wanted to create that space um, that is really close to what we used to enjoy before right. our body decided to transition or before we just was more intentional about the things that we put in our body. Right. Um, and because I, well, I guess I'll say this, um, my body started rejecting me. So that's I how think, I remember you saying a story about yeah. that one time. I so, think you did. And that's the number one reason why you started going vegan right i just that's how i got in this space i just listened to my body my body no longer um enjoyed me um and my body was literally rejecting it i was getting super sick so i just listened to my body and then i transitioned and in the midst of transitioning i realized that i don't have anything that is going I, we don't have anything in milwaukee that is going to make me enjoy this journey right so i had to figure something out to where like, okay, your body don't like it. So if you keep eating meat, you're going to be sick. Right. And that's not an option. So what you going to do about it? And that's that's when I was like, okay, I could cook my own shit. Right. And uh, um, when I cook my own shit, I, I, I season it how I like it, how I enjoy it. Um, and then y'all know I put my love and affection in there. So, yeah, I want to create that space for us. And then I also want to introduce it to the meat eaters and let them know that we are still vibes. Right. Like, I'm a whole vegan so, vibe. Let me ask you a question. Are you prepared for a brick and mortar? Am I prepared? Because that's what's next for you, fam. You know that, right? You know the next step is going to be you having your own spot. Because as we live in Wisconsin, right, it can be summer for two hours and winter the next day. You eventually going to need your own spot for us to pull up on. Dang, that's crazy because I'm that was like an overwhelming question because I don't want to say no because I know how powerful my words are. And I'm like too scared to say yeah. Um, what about a food truck? How you go handle the winter? Let's start with a food truck. Let's start with a food truck. That way, at least the kids can go sit in the corner and do something. Absolutely. I am ready for a brick and mortar. Let me just put that out there. There you go. I was, waiting for you. I, I, I was not going to let you change your mind. You were going to say yes. <laughs> let me put that out there. Yes, I am ready. Um, but I want to work towards a food truck first. You can do both at the same time. You know that, right? Okay. Well, you got you to have some place to cook the food, right? Okay. You know what brick and mortar don't mean you have to have a big old restaurant. Okay, yeah. All you need is a little corner in somebody's spot. Yeah, a space. That's all you need, space to cook. Yeah. That way they eat. everybody don't have to be at your house. So when I did um, Meatless Monday at Makoko's, I was in a commercial kitchen, mm -hmm. and that feeling was just phenomenal. It I'm felt like, like, it felt right. So I, I am a, a firm believer um that you can speak things into existence. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to try to look for this video, but I, um, 
I was on my stories and I was making burgers and I was recording and I just said it was random as a mud and I was just like, order up. And then I was like, uh, I'm just practicing y'all. Um, uh, I'm just practicing to uh, I'm just practicing for when I get my restaurant. And then when I was at Makoko's and I was making burgers, I'm like, dang. You in a restaurant. Right. I so, was like, dang, that's crazy. So now we got to go. So what we got to do is we got to find a spot. Mm-hmm. So we got to make it. It can't be a regular restaurant. We got to make it a vibe. So it's got to be like a club nobody wants anymore. Mm-hmm. That way we can have our homies over here on the bar. Okay. We can have a nice little vibe area, maybe a little stage so people can, you know, perform poetry, live sets, maybe do live podcasts there because, you know, you got to look out for the little people. Okay. okay? <laughs> but in the main focus is there's the it's called the butterfly. Mm, okay. okay so okay. that way your food is vegan kicked in the back but most folks won't realize it's vegan mm-hmm. until they try it mm-hmm. it's always going to be one person that's like Ugh, it's vegan i don't want it mm-hmm. and their friend gonna be like nigga you crazy try this and then they're gonna eat it and that's always the only reason why they're gonna be here all the time is for the food mm-hmm. they're gonna stay for the atmosphere mm-hmm. so yes. that's what we're gonna do yep. we're gonna put it somewhere here on the north side we got a nice little spot nice little idea mm-hmm. all right so we, we're talking about it right now i just want you to know that we're talking okay. about it so one year from now when you come back here, and it's time for your next one night stand, the four way dance, it's gonna be coming from the butterfly. Mm-hmm. Got it. All right. I don't wanna keep you much longer because I want you to go out here and enjoy the sun and go hug a tree or two. <laughs> you know I'm a hug a tree. You hug a tree or two. You gotta hug two. Yeah. All right. So, where can they find you? Where can they sign up for this event at? Um, so you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Butterfly, B-U-D-D-A-H-F-L-Y. Um, what was the next question? <laughs> Run down the information about your event one more time. So um, I really hope that y'all come out to help me celebrate my 33rd birthday. It's called A One Night Stand, Menage a Trois, well, where I will have vegan food. I'll have drinks. Hookah will be available, um, live, I mean, music, entertainment, and more. Um, Some of the vegan food will be my buffalo bites, my honey barbecue bites, crab cakes, butter burgers. I have vegan dessert, and that is November 14th at Makoko's, which is 7420 South Greenfield. Um, You can purchase your tickets at Cash Drop. Type in menage a trois with butter love. All right. With that being said, people, we have come to the end of this episode. Make sure you check us out on all the things that Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever else you um, listen to your podcast at. Um, definitely make sure you follow her because she's a whole vibe. Follow me, y'all. She's a whole vibe in two thirds. So with that being said, people, we are out of here. Peace.